Hey everyone and welcome to our next tutorial. As I promised in our first basics tutorial, this video is about our perception pipeline. For that we prepared a basic setup with a non-player character, an interest and a danger object. Furthermore, the setup of the agent is identical to the one of our basics tutorial. In the basics tutorial, we've set the game objects directly from within our behaviors. While this allows for easy prototyping, we recommend to take advantage of our perception pipeline for good reasons. First, it is much easier to handle complex level structures. So once the concept is understood, you can group any kind of game objects without too much effort by taking advantage of Unity's layer system. This is a far more efficient way to set things up instead of assigning each game object individually. Imagine you have over 100 game objects. For these it might be inconvenient to set each object separately. Second and most important, the performance of our AI is significantly increased through using the perception pipeline. Now let me explain why we need this whole pipeline at all. In order to support multithreading, we have to ensure that no classes from Unity are used. Therefore, we extract necessary data from each game object and store it in so-called percepts. If you set the game objects directly, the extraction would be done for each behavior. But if you use our perception pipeline, the extraction is done only once and independent of the number of your behaviors. So let's start. By pressing the play button, we can see that the current setup is already working. But for the reasons I have just mentioned, we want to use our perception pipeline now. So we have to use the filtered environments field placed in the environment tab of each behavior. Before we can set any reasonable value into this field, we have to set up the main parts of our perception pipeline. The pipeline consists of three different components. Aim environment, for grouping different kind of objects, like health potions, mines or walls, an aim steering perceiver, for extracting the required data from game objects collected in aim environment, and an aim steering filter, for making the extracted data available to our behaviors. Let's set up two environments first, one for grouping interest objects and one for danger objects. Here too, we add two game objects, attach the aim environment component and give them reasonable names, we provide two different ways for setting the game objects. You can set them directly and or assign objects via a specific layer. We will use Unity's layer system because it feels more comfortable to us. We have to create two new layers and assign them to our game object afterwards. Next, we can assign these layers to our environment component. In addition, we have to label each environment so that we can identify them later on more easily. After setting up the environment, 
An AIM steering perceiver component is required for extracting the data. So let's add a new game object and attach the AIM steering perceiver component. As you can see, the perceiver component expects the environment references as input. So finally, let's add our two environments. After we are done with this, we are able to distinguish between each environment with the help of the labels. Last but not least, we need to transfer the extracted data of our game objects to our AI agent. This is easily done with the AIM steering filter component. Just attach this component to the agent and refer to the correct steering perceiver. Next, we can set up the environments for each behavior by setting the fields filtered environments. And that's it. Let's see if it works properly. Once the setup is done, the scene can simply be extended by adding new game objects to layers automatically integrated into our system. This workflow will save you a lot of time. Thank you so much for watching and your feedback. We really appreciate your continuous support. In our next tutorial I will explain the AIM environment component in more detail, especially how the performance can be increased by using static game objects and how to add new game objects at runtime.